Hey guys, 1.35 million Kenya shillings. Yes, it's uh, another Sunday and we are bringing you the Outer Connect juxtaposition. And uh, today's cars, well, both are uh, both have forced induction. Uh, both are retailing for around 1.35 million Kenya shillings and both are trendy hatchbacks that are celebrated in the Kenyan market space. And uh, we are going to compare and contrast the 2017 Peugeot 208 and uh, put it head to head with the 2017 Nissan Note uh, Nismo. And as usual, AutoConnect is that channel that will guarantee you an alluring motor vehicle experience. So remember, you can follow me at a personal level Eric Wokabi, Eric with a CK on uh, Facebook, X, Instagram, and TikTok as well because we value your feedback and we have had you. Mesemam Natakagari affordable and these are two of the most affordable hatchbacks in the Kenyan market space today. Before we start uh, the up close and candid uh, comparison and contrast, I would like us to go through the definition of terms. Terms that you might hear in this review, both for the Peugeot and for the Nissan Note E12. So let's start by discussing what is quite confusing when you're talking about the Peugeot 208. From uh, 2012 all the way to 2015, there are terms that were used on the Peugeot 208, like uh, VTI. So VTI literally means uh, very intelligent variable valve timing and lift. So it's it's like the VVTI of Peugeot. And mostly the Peugeot 208 that had the VTI badge were naturally aspirated. They still had the 1200cc three-cylinder engine, but without a turbocharger. But fast forward, to 2016, uh, Peugeot introduced a turbocharger to the 1200cc Peugeot 208. And that's where the badge THP came into action. So THP basically means that the 208 has a turbocharger. I do not want to get to the intricacies of giving the actual meanings because some of them are actually in French. So the other thing I would like to tell you about the 208 is that from 2012 to 2015, uh, they came with a semi automatic transmission and uh, there is a gearbox a semi-automatic transmission that we are importing from waste auto spares for the 2015 Peugeot 208 so it was literally a manual gearbox with an actuator to shift the gears for you and uh, that is why most guys who own Peugeot 2 from 2012 to 2015 feel that they have a rough ride. They judder quite a lot because they are literally manuals with an actuator to shift gears for you. In fact, the only thing that does not seem to resemble that of, um, that of a manual transmission is the actuator itself. So we are going to get up close and candid about that actuator in our Tuesday episode because there's something we are doing courtesy of waste out of spares and remember if you're importing any spare parts you can contact waste their number is in the description below now fast forward to 2016 Peugeot got rid of the semi-automatic transmission and uh, put uh, <clears throat> uh, torque converter automatic transmission in the Peugeot 208 to be specific it's a six-speed automatic transmission so at least now we are at par with the Peugeot 208 and uh, what the badges mean and now let's head over to the Nissan Note now if you're buying a Nissan Note you will get uh, the badge uh, either pure tech or uh, digs and uh, digs we, we had to compare a digs to this one because digs literally brings the concept of forced induction to the Nissan Note but unlike the Peugeot 208 the Nissan Note does not run on a turbocharger it runs on a supercharger and the difference between a turbocharger and a supercharger is that a turbocharger uh, harvests energy from a 
exhaust gases. It uses exhaust gases to spin the turbine, whereas the supercharger on the Nissan Node DAGS uh, runs mechanically. It runs, it is run by a belt that is connected to a pulley. So that is the difference between the turbocharger and the supercharger. So DAGS literally stands for direct injection gasoline with a supercharger. Tuko pamoja hadi hapo. Now let's get up close and candid with these two cars. Let's talk about the Peugeot 208. Well, I've told you that from 2016, they employ the use of a turbocharger on their three-cylinder engine. By the way, the similar things between the Peugeot 208 and the Note are, one, forced induction. Secondly, both run on 1200 cc three-cylinder engines. So they are made for fuel economy and a little bit of performance. But let's get centric to the Peugeot 208. The Peugeot 208 is a celebrated super mini in the Kenyan market space. It's trendy, it's economical, and uh, also it's fun to drive, especially because of the small steering wheel that, uh, you know, that is used on it. It makes it feel quite sporty. And even the look of the 208, uh, it's, it's quite unfortunate that you don't have a sporty trim of the 208, but uh, this will do because the difference between the sporty trim of the 208 and this is just aesthetics. However, the biggest, uh, or rather if you are looking for a sporty Peugeot 208, you can get the Peugeot 208 GTI that is uh, that is uh, powered by a 1600cc turbocharged uh, engine. And also that is a similar thing that you will also get on the Nissan Note E12 because if you want to go all sporty you know that car has a nismo badge but it's just a nismo trim it's not an actual nismo the real nissan note nismo is powered by a hr16 that's a 1600 cc engine and has a manual transmission and they are quite pricey so is it now nazimi and nismo it's only the nismo trim too so it's only nismo aesthetics back to the 208 now how much power do you get from the 208 and i would like to show you a few things huh, before we can talk about power our output now the French are known to build some quirky cars for instance on the Peugeot 208 I cannot open the bonnet from the driver's side I have to go around and open it from the passenger side well the, the French have a way of trying to make things complicated you know they make their cars unique but in a complicated ways but anyway, that's how unique they can get. If you're talking about power, you know, for some strange reason, guys who drive Nissan Note Nismos, uh, they think their cars are fast. Well, if you're driving the 208, it's giving you around 108 horsepower. So not very significant, but considering it's a light car, well, it might feel fast and fun to drive. However, the Nismo, and sorry to, to tell you guys, uh, unfortunately for the Nismo, even with a supercharger, it will only give you around 98 horsepower. So anyway, metered to a good engine is a good transmission. And uh, I can say the shift from semi-automatic to full automatic on the Peugeot 208 was one of the best things that Peugeot could do on the 208. So metered to this engine or, or transmitting power to the wheels is a six-speed automatic transmission. And not only a, an automatic transmission, a torque converter automatic transmission, because from 2012 to 2015, they ran on an automated manual transmission. And that is why they would jack and jada. But is there any other thing to talk about when it comes to the Peugeot 208? Well, to be honest, I, I love the car and they say, uh, good things come in small packages and that is why well the 208 is to be honest it's quite small but anyway before we talk about how small it is about the suspension on the Peugeot 208 you have uh, conventional McPherson struts at the front and a torsion beam at the rear the Peugeot 208 is unconventional in almost everything when it comes to the interior one to open the bonnet you have to use a log, uh, a knob from the passenger side. Uh, 
the cluster is unconventional the ac vents are, con are unconventional the central locking button is unconventional the channel lock button you know in most vehicles you just open the door and just put it on or off but for the Peugeot 208 you engage channel lock from the driver's side you know any it's the French, this typical French technology. But uh, anyway, where does it win? The ergonomics, it doesn't have blind spots when you're driving it. It uh, The small steering wheel feels quite sporty. However, the infotainment system is nothing to really talk about. The Nissan Note E12 is a darling to many, and especially the Nismo edition. Why is this so? The Nismo trim gives it that sporty look. The bumper, the front lip, the side skirt, the spoiler, and the rear diffuser give it that mean, fast look. And uh, it's quite good looking, especially if you compare it to the Peugeot 208. That is something that we have to give it to the Nismo. It does have very good aesthetics and it's pleasing to the eye. In fact, we can call it eye candy. Now, let's talk about what powers up the Nissan Note E12. Now, the Nissan Note E12, I told you, this is not a real Nismo. This is just a Nismo trim. So, this is a Nissan Note E12 DIGS. And I told you, DIGS stands for direct injection gasoline with a supercharger. So, yes, it's powered by the three-cylinder HR12 DDR. Now, the HR12 DDR is the specific HR12 that gives a uh, provision for the use of a supercharger, as I told you. And uh, it doesn't give much power though it may it might look fast but it is far from fast in fact it gives a maximum power output of only 98 horsepower yeah so looks can be deceiving now this engine is mated to a cvt transmission and that is one of the biggest drawbacks on the nissan note e12 if you compare it to the Peugeot 208 which is driven through a six-speed automatic transmission and now the biggest discussion when it comes to the nissan note e12 is normally about the gearbox however the CVT on the Nissan Note is actually one of the most uh, reliable in the Nissan lineup. However, it still doesn't redeem itself from the legacy of uh, unreliability. And the other thing is, the reason why the Nissan Note does not give much power is because CVTs are not tuned for high torque applications. In fact, they are tweaked towards a smooth ride and fuel economy. So you cannot mix a CVT transmission and exemplary performance sour sour now where does the nissan note win against the peugeot 208 the nissan note wins against the peugeot 208 when it comes to them to matters space it's far much more spacious it has a bigger boot space you get more space on the second row of seats and also you also get very good headroom uh but when it, if we are talking about aesthetics, there is something that the Peugeot 208 that it gets that the Nissan Note E12 does not, and that is a moonroof, a panoramic moonroof. So you can buy a 208 with a panoramic moonroof, and that gives the 208 a very good-looking interior. And I can say that even in modern cars, what the Peugeot 208 provides in terms of their moonroofs is unmatched. So... Yes, let's look at the rear of the Nissan Note E12. The bumper, the diffuser, the spoiler, and the shark fin antenna give it that very, very sporty look. And it's an amazing car, but it does lose because of its transmission. But that does not mean that you cannot live with the car. If you maintain this car religiously and you do not abuse it, you can live with the CVT transmission on the Nissan Note. But it needs some tender love and care. Overview, Peugeot 208 versus the Nissan Note E12. Both have their pros and cons. Now let's start with the pros of the Peugeot 208. Number one, it's a performer. It has a very good fuel economy and it's quite good looking. Now the cons on the Peugeot 208 are as follows. One, it is limited in terms of space. But if you have a small family or you don't have one at all, then the Peugeot 208 would be a good car to have around. Now, let's get to the second con. The second con is actually uh, in matters reliability. It has proven to be quite reliable, but technical support is not as available as that of the Nissan Note. In fact, the engine on the Peugeot 208 is belt driven, whereas the one on the Nissan Note is 
chain driven. So with the engine on the Peugeot 208, you have to be extra careful with maintenance. You have to change that timing belt every 100,000 kilometers. So it is good when you're buying a Peugeot 208, be on the lookout on the stickers on when the timing kit was changed. The other thing is that spares, yeah, these days in Anza Kuingia Kwasoko, but they are not as available as those of the Nissan Note. Also, you have to pay a few extra coins if you're buying genuine parts for the Peugeot 208. So those are some of the major drawbacks when it comes to the Peugeot 208. Let's, let's move on to the Nissan Note uh, E12. Now, the pros of the Nissan Note E12 are number one, the pricing point is very good. Number two, it is fairly reliable. Number three, you have vast technical support because even in terms of gearbox, if you have a gearbox issue, we have quite a number of technicians who are able to give world-class um, technical assistance when it comes to Nissan gearboxes. The problems have sharpened our mechanics and technicians to be able to deal with them. So yes, it is still a very affordable vehicle. It's fairly reliable when it comes to matters engines. It looks very sporty and uh, it is quite easy to maintain, to be honest. Now, the cons on the Nissan Note 1, it is lazy. Even with a supercharger, you still don't get that thrill of uh of driving a sporty hatchback uh, you do not get the same thrill that you would get in a polo or um in a citron or in an uh, audi a1 it is still limited to that old lazy feeling of driving a nissan with a cvt transmission so when you're buying the two cars for the same price. It will be up to you to choose if you are getting European or to be specific French technology or you're going to go with the Nissan Note E12. But we value your feedback. Tell us in the comments which one would you go for if you are to drive these two cars uh, home. And we have these cars courtesy of Caplicity. You can visit Caplicity along Kiambu Road uh, or you can call David Caplicity. His number is in the description below. We offer service such as uh, pre-purchase inspection uh, and consultation you can reach us through the number in the description below so remember you can follow me at a personal level eric wakabi eric with a ck on uh, facebook x instagram and tiktok as well so till next time drive safe and uh, share like this video and tafadhali usisahau subscribe.